Bonjour, and welcome to the Amateur Detective Club. This club is exactly how it sounds. A bunch of amateurs talking about their favorite mysteries. So if you encounter a real mystery or a murder, contact the proper authorities. Do not come to us. We do not know what we are doing. But enjoy the program. Allons-y. Let us begin. I know I'll call this meeting of the Amateur Detective Club to order. My name is Tristan Miller, the saucy sleuth. I'm Melissa Maley, the spy. Today's show could be brought to you by Audible, but I'm still lazy and still haven't gotten our new link. Um, instead, it's brought to you by Patreon. You can go to patreon.com <laughs> slash ADCpod for a backlog of bonus content, bonus clips, and maybe some other stuff that I need to talk to Melissa about. Oh. Mm-hmm. And also our eternal gratitude. Yeah, that too. Eternal. So when I die, it's going to be on my tombstone. <laughs> Just like those pizza commercials. Oh, yeah. What do you want on your tombstone? Thanks, Greg. Oh, pizza. I had a personal frozen pizza okay. today. Okay. And it's good. It slapped. It's Celeste. I don't know who Celeste is, but uh, she's doing the Lord's work. Good pizza. It's not good. I can't emphasize this enough. It is like good, but it is not good. No, frozen pizza is like a different category of food than pizza. Yeah, it cannot be compared. What's your favorite brand? I I'll let you plug the socials in a minute, but Mm. like, what's your favorite brand of frozen pizza? Uh, who I haven't had one in a minute. There's DiGiorno, there's Red Baron, there's Celeste. No, I don't, yeah. Uh, I like the Amy's ones. <laughs> I've never had that, I didn't know. Oh, they're, uh, fancy and, uh. Okay, a gourmet frozen pizza mm-hmm, mm-hmm, <laughs> with mm-hmm. some umami. They actually make one that has no cheese. It's made with, like, a black bean sauce, and it's like a, I think it's vegan. <laughs> okay, you, you and I go... <laughs> To frozen pizza for wildly different reasons, I yeah. feel like. Yeah, it's true. I also have had there's there's a brand called Collie Power. Oh, Lord. <laughs> and it makes it with a cauliflower crust. Their veggie one is not great. I do like the one with like four cheeses. That's mm. good. If I can find a red baron stuffed crust, ooh, pepperoni pizza. That is what I will get every time. Pepperoni? Yeah. Pepperoni? Yeah, why not? It's not pepperoni? Like, I'm trying to figure no, out No, no, it's not spelling. like a brand. It's, like, it's pepperoni. It's just I say it funny. Oh. Because I heard it once and I thought, wouldn't it be funny to say pepperoni instead of pepperoni? And it is. Oh, I see. Uh, Ryan Stiles <laughs> says pepperoni at one point because he misspeaks on whose line is it anyway <laughs> and it stuck with me as a child and this is how my vernacular mm, is formed I see okay okay yeah yeah just like I say quagmire instead of quagmire because the first time I heard it was quagmire not quagmire because it was said by an English person okay yeah. how, how do you say oh here we go the name of the nut that's in a very good pie oh pecan it's pecan and if I'm feeling really fun, pecan. Mm. I'd be pleased to partake of your pecan pie. Oh. Yeah. See, again, watching movies, It's you hear one thing and it's stuck forever. Aluminium used to be, I have to think to say aluminum. Wow. Yeah. Okay. All yeah. Right. It's a chaotic mess in, your in mind. <laughs> yeah. It's just like, the, it's all doo-doo. And it's a wonder I can even speak and let alone try to do it for a living. I know, truly. <laughs> I, no, not not you, me also. Yes, I... And that is that is a thing. And for a long time I've said, because I go on tangents, I lose my train of thought, and it's frustrating, and it makes me feel... That's the true mystery train. <laughs> my, what am I trying to say? Yes, the the train is. of thought, yeah. Yeah, uh, and I think it has long been part of the reason... I like doing scripted theater. Yep. It's because, oh, great. I get to sound like I'm eloquent. <laughs> I've heard that from a lot of people, and specifically a friend of mine, well, an old friend of mine, he's not a friend anymore, may he rest in peace, um, used to say, I like acting because I know what the other person's going to say. 
Yeah. And I was like, it sounds like you have some issues you need to work out. That's correct. Yeah. We all do. Yeah. Well, everyone does. <laughs> I've just worked out most of mine. And so And you I'm... still want to be in entertainment. Well, it's the only thing I'm good at at this oh, point. Oh, okay. You know, yeah, sure. um, and that's even debatable. But yeah, uh, you could follow us on Twitter at... <laughs> Sure. Follow us on Twitter at ADC Pod. Also, Instagram. Same thing. Even Facebook. If you want, use that cursed site. <sighs> I um, We're also on the Scavengers Network. You can go to scavengersnetwork.com. Check out all their great podcasts and content there. Uh, yeah, just check them out. Do it up. Live a little. Ooh. Or live lot. No, no, no. To to quote Taco Bell. Oh, great. Live moss. <laughs> Don't live a little. Live moss. Is that also a thing you say? Taco? It's sometimes for fun. Um, mm. Taco mm. is generally how it's going to come out. But taco is. It, again, it's. The musicality of language. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I think that concept is very funny. Yeah. Of like, again, mispronouncing words is such an easy way. Mis- mispronunciating mm-hmm. things. Mm-hmm. Very easy laugh to get out of kids, specifically. Sure. Or a way to confuse kids. <laughs> That's true. I was never confused by it. Well, if you mispronounce it initially when they're still forming language. Well, it is a bit of a quagmire you would find yourself Exactly. <laughs> And that is how we have come to this. Yeah, this that's what's known in the biz as a callback. Ooh. Ooh. I'm so glad we have Tristan so, explaining comedy to now us. Now, here's the thing. You don't need to take <laughs> Improv 101 anymore now because, kids, that's all you learn. You're welcome. So today, we are going to talk about do, 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 do. episode four of Only Murders in the Building. The Sting. The Sting. Don't stand, don't stand, don't stand so close to me. Do you like Sting? I guess. <laughs> I haven't really thought about him much. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's solid. That's a solid response. I, my mom loves Sting. Okay. Lo- like has his Christmas albums love Sting. Wow. Yeah. And he sings a version of the Angel, Angel Gabriel. And I give it <laughs> every year she plays this song. And it's like, and I have this habit too, because I like the way my sounds when it's lower. When I sing, I sing a little too low from like a little out of my range sometimes. Yeah. But he sings the Angel Gabriel from Hammock. Like it's clearly he's like he can hit the notes, but it is work for my man. Uh huh. And every year I sing it to my mom, and she hates me for it. Anyway, she loves the police. She loves saying Roxanne, etc. Oh yeah, Roxanne's good. I hear you don't have to put on that red light. No. Walk the streets for money. You don't care if it's wrong or if it's right. I guess I do like Sting. Yeah. Hmm. How about that? Uh, so we open up on. A voice speaking into a microphone. Oh, right, right, right. It's a character we don't really know yet. Or do we? Can you hear the rain? I can hear the rain. Can tweet at us whether or not you can hear the rain. <laughs> it's very nice. Yeah, I hope my, my apartment doesn't flood again. <laughs> it's, only, it's not supposed to rain for that long tonight. No, it should be fine. So we it's a, a voiceover of... Um, a character we've heard before. Yes. But not yet seen, which is um Cinda. Yeah. Cinda <clears throat> who does the podcast Everything Isn't Okay in, in Oklahoma. Oklahoma. Yeah. yeah. Uh yeah. And then we see we cut to Steve, uh, meaning Charles, opening a little letter saying that says no mushy stuff, but you're my favorite person. Love Lucy. So there's more of that. Yeah. Yeah. And he has Bugs Bunny and Porky Pig behind him. Mascot style. Yeah. Not drawn in. Right. Like Elmo Times Square style. David Lynch has nothing on this. Oh, yeah. 
Have you seen Rabbits, his short film? No. Oh, you would find it disturbing, but maybe delightful. Sure. Basically, it's a faux sitcom, but everyone's in a rabbit costume. And Naomi Watts is one of them. Mm. And she was like, David, can't I just do the voice? And he was like, no, Naomi, you got to be in the costume. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> wow. All yeah. right. That's weird. It's really weird. That's all I could think of the first time I saw this. <laughs> so we're intercutting a lot between... Uh, we're going back and forth between different characters. So we get Cinda intercut throughout this. We see uh, Oliver's son run in and, you know, tend to, to tend to the dog because he's a veterinarian. Um, and the voiceover is something about what would you do if you had a second chance? Yeah. And making mistakes. What if you could take back a mistake, mm -hmm. but in doing it, you made a bigger one? Ooh. Ooh. It's like, you know, if you had the power to go back in time and fix something, mm -hmm. but maybe it makes everything even worse. Yeah, once. causality. Yeah, yeah. The butterfly effect. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I guess, I guess, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, all that stuff. Uh, so we have Mabel putting that post-it from Tim on a calendar. Yes. So here's the thing. Okay. Literally every time Selena is on screen, I do literally gasp. It is, I am in love with her and specifically in love with Mabel. And I don't know how this happened so quickly. <laughs> I just will literally be like, I like, I, ah, <laughs> I don't know what's come over me. She's very cute. She's very People cute. People complain and her... about her voice. People do? She yeah. She has an adorable little voice. I know. People, I guess it's not for everyone, but it's the biggest complaint I've seen about this show at all. Okay. I mean, I mean, I get why one might, because she has a really nasal forward voice. She mumbles. She's a mumbler. Yeah. Which is fine, but it's like, doesn't she also sing? think so she she has a decent like as a resonant voice it's not like it's yeah. like that uh, like no or anything like it that. doesn't bother me i don't know why i think but... it's adorable yeah fools oh by the way what's up i got a coat Mo. it's similar to the coat that she has in the first episode the big floofy one yeah good the... <laughs> i got a jumpsuit that you saw <laughs> it's black but it's also very similar of like <laughs> Tristan and I are doing our best to dress like Mabel Mora. Oliver has alerted um, oh. Charles and Mabel to the fact that they've, he says they've come for my family. The murderer um, has come for my family. Yes. And he, ex <laughs> he they signs rush his over. text. He does. Um, <laughs> they rush over. He, they explain that um, Winnie has been poisoned, but she's being tended to by her his veterinarian son and she should be fine um but yeah there's a threatening note on his door mm -hmm. um and the podcast door i'll end you yeah exactly so because of the run-in he had with sting on the elevator and sting being very mean to winnie and we get a moment where he does say, Sir Sting. Maybe not in this scene, but he does oh, say okay. Sir Sting at one point. So all our fuss <laughs> last yeah. week was, could have been <laughs> circumvented by us paying attention to this episode. Oh, right, yeah. As is so often the case. True. <laughs> um, but, but Mabel is like, oh, you mean from you too? And they look at her. <laughs> Aghast. And she goes, no, I know. it's he, he did that one song, and they're like, that's Peter Gabriel. At one point, Martin Short makes a beautiful acting choice mm. where she says it's like the third one that she gets wrong. He grabs Steve Martin's hand. <laughs> it's so funny. And then Steve immediately does a gesture so it like goes away. But it's so funny. Yeah. So Sting has lost money from the investment firm. Yes. That Tim Kono also worked for and cat daddy who, howard 
Steve Martin says the cat guy. Yeah. Uh, said that Tim just lost money for a big client that put two and two together. And then he goes, well, Sting is on Ursula's list of people who were there and who didn't leave during the fire alarm. Right. And Martin Short goes, well, why didn't you say anything before? He goes, because it was Sting. <laughs> yeah. And then he goes, he's our best suspect other than tie dye guy. And they're like, will you drop tie dye guy? I'm not going to drop tie dye guy. <laughs> So here's the thing that I noticed uh, watching back the first episode at one point. Yeah. You know how in the first, first episode, uh, it's like a two months later kind of deal? Yeah. Where at Mabel is over a body. It seems to be a body and she's covered in blood. Yes. You like the way I'm saying body? Yeah. Okay. And uh, the... Per- <laughs> The person who is lying on the floor, <gasps> apparently dead, is wearing a tie-dye hoodie. Bum, bum, bum. So for the very observant folks who got that from the first episode and then started connecting it when they started talking about tie-dye guy, good on you. I didn't notice it the first time, but I did notice it the second time. I didn't notice it the second time, but... The fact that they dismissed him so much in the first episode led me to go, well, something's going to happen there. Because mm-hmm. Columbo. Yeah. And Scooby-Doo. By the way, are you caught up? No. Okay. All right. No. All right. Do you know who Tie-Dye Guy is? No. You don't? No. How many episodes have you watched? Like five, but I fell asleep. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I'm not sure. Gotcha. I have a hunch... Of whomst it is. All right. Tell me. You can cut it. Well, I, I'm, don't, I'm not going to tell you if you're going to say yes or no. So let's just. I won't. Up. I won't say yeah. yes or no. Just I'm, tell me. No. Tell me. It's my little secret. Oh, my God. It's Twisty's little secret. Ew. <laughs> I don't like that at all. Oh, sometimes friendship is just bothering each other. Sometimes that leads to the dissolvement of a podcast. Oh, well, it's been fun. No, uh, tie-dye guy seems to me like the, um, I can't remember the fella's name, the guy that just got out of prison. Okay. Seems to me logical. Because, hmm. again, he's set up. Gotcha. And then not found at all. Gotcha, but gotcha. would he would have access to the building because his dad lives there and no one knows who he is. So we'll see. Yeah. If not, if it's someone like Martin Short, I'm going to be like, well, that's OK. <laughs> Fine. What if it's Tina be. Fey? Ah, speaking of, they say, OK, we got to talk to her. We got to talk to Cinda Canning because. <laughs> Which. I know the way they go about this is absolutely how new york works yeah but is an absurd thing that's like me when i started positive and negative going i need to talk to mark maron <laughs> yeah like what the hell <laughs> yeah or terry gross <laughs> could you imagine calling up terry gross excuse me i want to start a podcast can you give me advice right lort yeah so he goes to his neighbor the one that had asked about lucy mm-hmm and because he figured out uh, Charles, Charles did uh, figured out that he's like parent friends with Cinda Canning. Yeah. M- Marty Short does offer up that they go to the same cupcake place. Yeah. And, and, and Steve is like, I think I can do better than that. Yeah. Uh, this is also not a great way to go about it. But but yeah, um, I, I, it's it works, though. It can, unfortunately. I mean, sometimes you just gotta. You got a network, baby. That's Hollywood, baby. Yeah. So, so yeah, he goes, goes to him and asks if he can get that introduction going. And also, in the meantime, they talk a little bit about Lucy, um, who's his neighbor's wife has just finished facetiming with. Right. And she asked about Charles. Mm-hmm. And Charles was like, does she seem okay? And she goes, yeah. Yeah, she yeah. seems she seems good. Um, 
Yeah. He says Charles does lay on the guilt a little bit because he yeah. goes, I don't I don't want to make a bother, but this this podcast is like the only thing that's really gotten like my juices going lately, which is sad. <laughs> Charles is sad. He's so sad. He's yeah. a sad, sad man, and he gets sadder throughout this episode. <laughs> but that does raise the stakes. Um, and it makes it more compelling to want to help. And the neighbor seems like a, a very nice gentleman. Oof. Yeah. So then we're we're on an elevator. Oh. <gasps> so they are g- going to meet Cinda. Because um, it worked. Yeah. Uh, but first, they're still in the Arconia and the bassoonist Jan gets on. Yes. And it, it, Mabel's eyes light up. Like, I love her so much. <laughs> I want to cry. I'm in love with this woman. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Jan, Amy Ryan, is wearing a shirt that says, the only thing sexier than a bassoon is me with a bassoon, which is very nerdy and fun. Yes. And she says to Charles, mm-hmm. oh, you must, you're dressed up. You must be going so, to a woman. No man dresses up that much unless it's for a woman. Mm-hmm. And he go, and Charles goes, yes, I suppose I am. And then all of us are like, yes. For, for a, a business mi-. meeting. And he goes, oh, yes, yes. And I see you are going as a sexy bassoonist. Not to say that. I mean, I just, the thing is that it, and she goes, I'm going to stop you before you accidentally say that I'm not sexy, <laughs> which is so good of her. Yeah. <laughs> so very good. Yeah. And he follows her off the elevator briefly and says, I hope I'll hear you playing tonight. And mm-hmm. she says, you'll hear me, but sooner or later. Mm-hmm. Ay, ay, ay. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. Ay, ay, ay. <laughs> um, yeah. Mabel is encouraging him to ask her out. He yep. keeps chickening out. So they're going into the they're going into the office. And Cindy Canning, by the way, by the way, is played by Tina Fey. Yes, she is. Um And there's another Cindy who is her assistant. And yes, then a third right. Cindy shows up. Yeah. And really. at one point, Steve turns to Marty and goes, there's three of them. And he goes, it's a value pack. <laughs> Very good joke. A lot of, hey, this show, pretty funny. Pretty funny, it turns out. What? I love seeing people, like, discover the show on mm. social media. They're like, oh, my gosh. I have you watched it's like yes it's great so Cinda Canning is very busy and she's a company has just bought her uh for like 30 million dollars has offered to and then she gets the call the mid-meeting yeah um and the reason the gang is all there is to see how she approaches speaking with a very well-known person yes yes because yes. they have to talk to sir sting which is actually this is the scene where marty says sir sting yeah that makes sense um and she goes well what i like to do is i brought a turkey to such and such a home because it disarms them oh yeah yeah and they're like, oh, so we should bring a turkey. She's like, no, 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 no. I find what works for you, but find a way to disarm them. And this whole time, you know, M- Oliver and... Charles. Mabel. The other, the Tina Fey. Cinda. Cinda. Oliver and Cinda are talking this back and forth. And then Charles, like, puts his hand out and goes, did you take the $30 million? And Mabel just goes, thank you. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. And she does. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Which is nuts that it, that a podcast could be acquired for that amount of money. Right. One of the pieces of advice that she gives them is embrace the mess because Charles said something like this whole thing's a mess. Yeah. And she goes, no, that's where the good stuff is. Yeah. Yeah. Which comes up later in the episode. So they they write that on their bulletin board and Charles is back in his apartment with the the bulletin board and then turns around talking to Bugs and Porky. Yes. And he hears a bassoon playing. Yeah. And then he gets out his um accordion. Yeah. 
this is it's a specific kind that they mention. Oh, yes. What are what are they called? What are they called? Ha, are they ha, something with an H? Ha, <laughs> I want to say. They're a harpsichordian, if you can no, believe it. No, <laughs> that's not it. Uh, but yeah, and it's the same little guy that he was playing before. Yeah. And they play back and forth. Concertina. It's a there concertina. it is. Concertina. So they, they're they playing across the courtyard. It's very cute. It is very cute. <laughs> if you're happy and you know it. Yeah, and they also play, he plays Take Me Out to the Ball Game, and then she doesn't respond, and he's like, oh no. And then she comes to the door. Yeah. And I was like, would you like to go on a date with Phoebe Stowe? Yeah. Which is how I ask people. I don't know, dates. Please, Ms. No, I put take off my little hat. Mmm, <laughs> it's the best way to get dates. I also, the note says, dinner, lobby in an hour, and then writes, this is Jed, by the way. It's very good. <laughs> yeah, she leaves a little note. Yeah. It's very cute. Um, They go to the restaurant where the everyone met listening to the podcast in the first scene which is why i kind of started to think that the lobby like had an actual restaurant in it which it very well could be but i guess that doesn't quite make sense with the first episode because everyone's rushed out of the building it's across the street it's across the street it is your honor it's across the street Mm -hmm. may the record show can i just get that back it's across the street oh thank you very much you're welcome (laughs) So we have Mabel and Oliver and... Sitting in a tree. All, they're getting out of the elevator and he has hummus and he's talking about hummus. How is it? It's not it's hummus. Like- it's hummus. You don't need to. And she goes, Do you, so you really only eat dips? And he's like, yeah, it's a great, you know, it's fine. It's whatever. And she goes, that's disgusting. And he goes, well, there's no forks as well. You can just throw away the... She's like, this this man is not well. Yeah. Which is true. <laughs> yeah. Oliver is not well. No. Uh, so they walk into Charles's apartment, and uh, again he the has door a, just unlocked. Yeah, he has a suit on. He looks very nice. He says he's going on a date with with the sexy bassoonist, uh, <laughs> and Mabel's giving him advice, and he's Sh- like, "Excuse me, I've been going on dates longer than you've been alive." And, mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and then he has uh, Bugs and Porky waving at him, and he goes. I've been going on first dates longer than you're alive. I'm very good at first dates because that's generally the only ones I get. Um, Which begs us to the point that maybe he's not so good at first dates. Exactly. Mm-hmm. I think that's the uh, the irony yeah, yeah, of the yeah. sentence he's saying. And then Oliver starts giving him advice. It's like, it as much as he's like, Charles says something to the effect of people get uncomfortable when you compliment them these days. And Charles goes, oh, well, if it's not on your person, yeah. per- you can compliment. Say you like her purse. And Mabel goes, N- no. <laughs> it's like you so much can't tell his secretary look- has looks good in a pair of slacks these days. And Mabel goes, also no to everything you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> it's very good. Um, but they're like, what? And then, and then Oliver says this, which I love. He says, because... Charles clearly doesn't want to talk about what's going on. Right. And Oliver says, let the youth know we can carry the burden. And it's the word we that is so good (laughs) because it amplifies the notion from last week's episode of, again, you are nearly 60. Yeah. So good. Yeah. So consistent. Right. Uh. So Jan is at dinner and she's very forthcoming. There's a thing before that, that with the scene with Oliver. Yes. Because Charles then expresses that he has a lot of anxiety surrounding first dates because right. no matter what, it's scary. If it goes well, it's scary because that could lead to something. If it doesn't go well, that's scary. Every time I go on a first date, I just want to go home, put my head into a pillow and scream. I don't like Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I, I think, I think I might be Steve Martin. <laughs> no, that's not true. First dates are quite fun, but yeah, and and both Mabel and Oliver are like, just be yourself, buddy. <laughs> yeah, essentially. So Jan has told basically her life story 
mm-hmm. to Charles, you know, standard first date talk, nothing too like personal, but I would say a little bit more in depth than a lot of first dates I've been on. Okay. But I also am Jan in this situation. Yeah, that's fair. I because at one point Jan goes, Well, how did your parents mess you up, essentially? Sure. And that's literally something I've said on a date. Yeah. Because I'm like, I don't care what movies you like. Who cares? <laughs> uh, movies come and go. I guess so. Trauma? Trauma comes is forever. forever. <laughs> New from Maybelline. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so Jan tries to get some info out of Charles. And Charles practically completely clams up. Yeah. Yeah. He, Steve has this great... They do this great little bit where um, Jan has taken like a body language course Mm -hmm. and he's like, I think, you know, you're, I feel relaxed around you because your body language and he goes, and he gestures and he goes, ah, palms out. That's very opening. And he goes, yeah, it's the last supper pose. Who's more comforting than Jesus, (laughs) but you wouldn't want to date Jesus because you'd just be worshiping him all the time. And like, that's a very funny thing to say. Yeah. And exactly also something someone say would say when they were nervous. Right. Because that's so stupid. It's the dumbest yeah. thing. It's like, wait, what are you talking about? Yeah. But, yeah. Exactly. And then Charles also fumbles and says that she accidentally says she has a lot of baggage. And at one point when she goes, well, she says something, and I actually want your opinion on this. Okay. She says, stories are reciprocal in nature. When someone offers a story about yourself, themselves, it is expected to get one of equal or greater value in return. Do you think that? And if so, why? Oh, no. It's like a an essay. Uh, it depends on the situation. Uh, in this situation, in a date situation, I'd say yes. Because... You're trying to build a rapport, uh, a dialogue between two people that are, you know, developing a communication. Mm -hmm. Right? Developing trust. Sure. Developing a potential relationship. Yes. Okay. I agree. I think... I would say this... I agree with the sentiment, but the way she expressed it would make me go, I don't want to talk to you Mm. because no one owes anyone anything. Oh, sure. I think. But it is a social contract that you're like, if I open up to you, you're going to say, oh, well, this thing happened to me. That's similar. Again, equal or greater value. Yeah. But the tricky thing is with like specifically a first date is whether or not how comfortable people are yeah whereas like were i jan i probably would have noticed that i was doing most of the talking yeah but i agree with what she says conceptually right exactly i also think that i a lot of the reason i talk the reason i talk about myself so much Mm -hmm. but truly is because I'm trying to make the other person comfortable if they want to tell me something about themselves. And mm-hmm. I'm hoping that it will. I don't expect it, but I hope that my openness will. Because at some point along the way, I got really scared of asking people specific questions. Mm-hmm. Because I didn't want to be like, how's your girlfriend? Oh, we broke up. And yeah. like start a whole thing. So I tell people stories in hopes that they will then feel comfortable opening up to me. He tries to he tries to open up. He's fumbling around. He's really still very closed off. He offends her. Yeah, because he said, oh, so I'm supposed to tell you all my red flags now. Yeah. Which, oh, yeah. <laughs> whoa, Steve. Yeah. And we hear Cinda's voice. Sometimes the second chance is just another chance to get it wrong. Because she's like, I'm good. And they leave. Yep. Uh, Then we're back at Steve's apartment. And and then Oliver comes in. 
With a turkey. With a turkey. That they're going to cook. That they're going to cook. And bring to Sting. <laughs> to uh, Sting. Bring to Sir Sting. Mm-hmm. And Steve goes on this diatribe. He's clearly been drinking. Steve has been, goes on this diatribe of, well, you know, well, it's my hobby. Murders are my hobby. Murders are what's going to nurse me to bed and pour soup in my mouth when my swallow function no longer works. And the look Martin Short gives him is so funny because he's just like man i have no idea what to do here it's yeah. really funny seeing people <laughs> flounder like that yeah and he goes well we're embracing the mess so let's give us a mess and give me that baster and we'll make a mess and yeah. it's like <laughs> charles <laughs> at one point during this episode Oliver calls him Charles, Chucky, and Chaz uh-huh. to like try and get his attention. Yeah, it's great. Uh, <laughs> so, so yeah, they're talking about because it's like at night and they're gonna cook this turkey overnight and yep. bring Sting a turkey a morning, in the mor- a morning turkey. And oh, <laughs> Marty Short nails a delivery. It had me howling. And he goes, it's. <laughs> Steve Martin goes, we're going to bring a turkey in the morning. And Marty goes, yeah, I thought it was a little unusual, but I thought maybe if we brought coffee. <laughs> <laughs> so the next morning, they go to Sting with a fully cooked turkey. <laughs> and Sting himself opens the door. And he goes, do we have a turkey on the agenda? And his assistant goes, I don't see a turkey on your (laughs) your schedule, schedule, sir. And Steve goes, I hope not because it'd be embarrassing if you you got two. (laughs) Which is good banter. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Uh, And so Sting, I think, briefly recognizes Charles and... Yeah, he goes, are you? He goes, yep, it's CBS, 12 seasons. And he just waltzes right past Sir Sting. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we're so sorry we didn't bring any yams because, you know. Because he, just... he goes, this is the first time we're doing this. Yeah. We should have right. Again, very funny. Yeah. The show is really good, y'all. Sting almost immediately apologizes for the elevator incident where he encountered... Uh, Winnie, yes, the dog. He goes, I was having a bad day. Yeah. And so Oliver looks pretty caught off guard. Like, oh, yeah. this is the entire reason that we're, we're here. Because you thought I poisoned. Yeah. Yeah. Charles <laughs> tries to use I know what it's like to be famous as a. Uh... <sighs> they never know the real us. And can I tell you, in a beautiful callback, Oliver grabs Mabel's hand. Yeah. When this happens. Yeah. And I love this again because it's like something you would only really notice if you're. It's very good. Yeah. Turns out these veteran comedian actors are know what the hell they're doing. They really do. They really do. It's really quite brilliant. Um. So <laughs> they're not super <laughs> subtle. And then after Charles goes says all this nonsense of like ah, we know what it's like to be famous there's a beat and goes I think I'm sitting too close to Sting and he goes <laughs> <laughs> and the fact that he says I'm sitting rather than I think I'm sitting doesn't address Sting <laughs> <laughs> right it's like for the audience it's like ah, I'm sitting too close to Sting exactly. it's very funny it's so funny oh my god uh, yeah so uh, so basically Sting knows where they're going with this and he says if you think Tim's fault uh Tim's death is my fault well you're right and they're like <gasps> excuse me I think Oliver even says you said it was your fault sir Sting into the mic yeah, yeah. hell mic he has So basically he yelled at him uh t- Sting yelled at Tim on a phone call cuz he lost a whole bunch of money and basically said you should kill yourself which sucks um <laughs> But uh, but yeah. So and then presumably Tim did. 
right. as which is the official story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what that's that was the diagnosis. Nope, not that's not the word. Prognosis? Uh, no, that's no. a doctor. Uh, um, well, the ter- the determined cause of death. Uh, sure. Yeah. Um. So Sting starts crying the whole deal, and then mm-hmm. finally his uh, assistant comes in and is like, "Okay, I-, I just have to say this: Sting didn't kill him or poison your dog." Yeah, because Oliver does shout, "That's why you poison your dog, my dog." Yeah. Wait, what? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And yeah, his assistant says that, and he goes, "Oh, you think Tim was murdered?" And they're like, "Yeah." He goes, "Oh, thank God." <laughs> Right, yeah. Very good. I'm so relieved he didn't <laughs> inadvertently cause a man to kill himself. And yeah. then he sings a little song because he's like, oh, I feel so... And, and <laughs> they're all like, the song is not good, Sir Sting. Yeah. And he says, after he does, he goes, it's hard writing songs. <laughs> <laughs> Which is true. <laughs> Which is very true. He's very funny. He is. There was some line that a musician said is like, it's like, oh, where do these ideas for your these brilliant songs come? And he goes, well, if I knew where they came from, I'd go there more often. Yeah. Yeah, it's so true. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Think about that next time you're thinking about creative people, maybe. <laughs> it is. It's chipping away the statue from the marble. Mm-hmm. Like getting rid of all the pieces that aren't, you what, know, whatever the it is. or whatever. <laughs> um. So they are back in the elevator. As they do. This is really, this elevator set. My goodness. I have a theory about the elevator set. Oh. I think Mm -hmm. it's big enough and that this crew can be 10 feet back. Oh, sure. And they can use a small lens you know, a wider angle lens on it zoom in for most of the stuff mm-hmm. and it's just the three leads always in the elevator i think dur- due to the global health crisis mm-hmm. they may have reconfigured some things to have the scenes shot in the elevator interesting i i this is a theory of mine i i've no i don't know anyone who worked on the the show to ask them yeah but this is a theory of mine. I mean, sometimes you'll throw like a Tim Kono or a um, Jan in yeah. the elevator with them as well. But, but it's yeah. very rare. Yeah. It's mostly the three leads. Mostly the three leads. And they have these beautiful wide, like the rest of the set. Do you think mm. they shot in an apartment building or do you think they built a set? Oh, goodness. Right? Yeah, because it really feels like an apartment building. Like, this feels like a New York apartment building, if you've ever the, been. The exterior clearly is. Well, yeah, of course. But some of the lobbies feel like they could be constructed. Yeah, yeah, the lobbies. And the apartments, of course. The apartments are constructed. They must have been. Yeah, no. But, like, I remember when we were shooting Holston, like, some of the, not studio, for studio like, some of the, like, when he goes and visits um, Judy Garland's daughter, what's her name? Liza, Liza Minnelli. Minnelli. When, uh, her apartment was just a building in Manhattan that mm-hmm. they rented out for a couple of days. Sure. So I was yeah. like, is that what happened? I'll do, I'll snoop. <laughs> yeah. So Charles goes to Jan mm-hmm. and he tells her. Haunted by Bugs and Porky. Haunted by Bugs and Porky still. He tells her the story of his ex, Emma, who he met, what was it, on a vacation? Yes, his sister had gotten him a vacation, which he hates travel, he hates fun, he doesn't like an upset in his routine, but he met her on a vacation. Right. So he met, she met vacation Charles. Fun adventure actor man, as he says. Yeah, exactly. Uh, And so she moved in with her seven-year-old daughter, Lucy, and she would cook her an omelet every morning. He would cook her an omelet every morning, which is the omelet he always makes. Which is because he wanted to give Lucy some routine. Yeah. Because he recognized that children need that. Mm -hmm. And Emma hated it. Right. Uh, 
so he decides that one day they're going to go on a cruise. Emma loves it. Right. Uh, it's a family fun cruise. Emma hates it. Yeah, exactly. Um, so at one of the stops, Emma gets off the boat with Lucy and does not come back. And Charles had paid Bugs and Porky yep. to hang out with them extra to hang out with them that day specifically and kind of throughout the whole cruise. Yeah. As like a special fun treat for Lucy. Yeah. But also there was, they were having like an anniversary dinner for Mm -hmm. Emma as well. Yeah. So that's why those are the manifestations of his anxieties surrounding specifically dating. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So he wanted to keep in touch with Lucy in particular because he had, you know, they had become very close. Um, Gosh, that's hard. Yeah. And he... She, Emma wouldn't let him. Yeah. And he says, I'm telling you all this because I would like a second date. Right. And she says, yes. Yes, she does. And then he bursts into Oliver's apartment, this beautiful oneer that tracks. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, great steady cam work. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. I was watching a show the other day, mm. which has like almost the whole thing is a tracking shot like one tracking shot i love a one or oh it is a very long time and i'm following it the whole time i'm like have they broken it yet nope nope they keep doing they're still doing Mm -hmm. it there did you see that um clip that was going around twitter of a soviet film that goes from a it i'll try and find the the shot it's beautiful it goes from inside a bus tracking a woman through a crowd and then it goes up onto a crane and then from the crane, it goes to a building and then through a building and then out through a, the street. Oh. It's beautiful. Wow. And you can't see the cuts. Wow. It's, so it's either they, you know, had, they held the camera and then put it on one crane and then shifted it to another really smoothly or their their editor was yeah. phenomenal. Um, yeah. The, what I'm talking about is The Haunting of Hill House. It's like episode five or okay. six. Um, they're at a funeral home and... It, it's not always on the same person, but like, oh, they'll go I into love scenes with other people and like they'll go into. And I mean, lots of tricks happen because um, this is also a ghost story. Mm-hmm. So like I do. I love a one but I love it when it says something about what's supposed to be going on, because sometimes it's just like, hey, look at this cool thing that we did. A lot of people criticize Birdman for that specifically because mm. it's all done, quote unquote, in one shot. There are a lot of, you know, hidden cuts. Right. But it's to show like the, the movie happens over the course of like three days. And then it's also to show how chaotic everything is. Like it, yeah. it's, it is justified, I think, in the thematic elements of the piece mm-hmm. where sometimes it is just like, hey, this is cool. <laughs> and it is. It's very cool. Yeah. To do that. But you know how, to quote Brian De Palma of all people, you know how I feel about coverage. I hate it. I do. Anytime you're, there's just shot, reverse shot, I'm like, come on. Yeah. There's uh, so many different things you can do with a camera. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I'm in my second watch of Hill House now. Mm-hmm. So I'm very much more, like, because I, I know the story now. Sure. So I'm, I'm paying more attention. I'm like, Jeez, I forgot about this. That's right. This is the coolest. Mm-hmm. Like, and it is. It's very, it, but it's smart too. They're, uh, they're, they're trying to follow this family at this funeral and like, again, how chaotic it is. Yeah. Would you ever date someone who has a kid? Yes. So Steve comes in, and there's a beautiful tracking shot. Um, I would too. I have no qualms with that. Yeah. I feel like I understand why people have hangups about it, obviously. And we see that mm-hmm. in the story. Yeah. But I, I don't know. I always got emotional. I do love kids a lot. I yeah. do. I yeah. really get along with them and I'm good with them. And I like. Absolutely. Having kids around. I think they're fun and weird. Yeah. Um, I've kind of come to the point 
in my life where if I am with someone that wants to have a kid, Mm -hmm. I would be up for that. But I also like super don't want to care. Like I'd rather not ever be pregnant. I don't think I would like that. You'd rather just adopt a kid or have one Which is very difficult. But yeah. Yeah. So especially because you also don't want to. There's so many ethical considerations with adoption because yeah, yeah. there's a lot of people, uh, there's a lot of kids who were, you know, taken from their homes um, and potentially wrongly that you don't want to. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mess with that. 100%. Um, I did almost start crying on the sidewalk because I saw a family. I'm like, I do want to be a dad mm. really badly. And, you know, It's not just women who have biological clocks that tick. Anyway, beautiful tracking shot. Steve comes into Oliver's apartment and then collapses on his couch, his face in a pillow, much as he described before. Yeah. Um, And then we see Mabel Googling. Um, She's got this post-it about the appointment that Tim was supposed to go to on the 21st, um, which is still not today. Like, we're still, that's still in the future. Um, as of this recording as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, so she's looking up who this might be. She thinks she's figured out a jeweler mm-hmm. um, that might that the appointment might, might be with. So. Yes. Yeah. Uh, then it cuts back, right, to Oliver and Charles. Yes. And we have Winnie being delivered. And uh, he says, wait, are you hanging out with Mabel Mora? Because he listened to the podcast, yeah. which is very sweet. Yeah. Um, and they're like, yeah, why? Yeah. And so basically he reveals, I don't know Oliver's son's name. He's great. He does a great job. Yeah. Um, Will, there we go. Uh, so Will says, hey, dad, you know who Mabel used to hang out with? Tim Kono. Bum, bum, bum. Yeah. And he says, that girl is bad news. And oh, boy, is she. Oliver. <laughs> mm. Oliver pulls out uh, a boom mic. And says, can you say that again? Yeah. <laughs> Very big fuzzy filter on it so we get a cinda uh voice over um that's five months from now bum, bum, and it is cinda doing only murders in the building is doing it? only murderers yes. in the building yes yes right and we see mabel being followed on the s- sidewalk by a man in a tie-dye hoodie tie-dye sweatshirt yeah but yeah that's the end of the episode that's the end of the episode it's good it's good i actually liked this episode more the second time because i get very uncomfortable when uh i get uncomfortable when people accuse people of doing something that they didn't do and so the whole premise of it with sting like it all felt very awkward to me the first time i watched it oh interesting yeah I can understand that, but I am coming from it from the point of view that Charles and Oliver are morons. So <laughs> it's I don't know. It's akin to like, and it was you, no, mm-hmm. and it was you, but like, um, but I can understand why that th- that scene certainly is awkward. Yeah. Um. But I think the reason I don't get as uncomfortable as, say, something like from The Office, right? Where Michael is a buffoon and is meant to be made fun of. Yeah. However, Steve Martin talks about this idea of kind comedy, where the joke is placed on oneself Mm -hmm. rather than another person. Yeah. And this series exemplifies that. Oh, absolutely. Only person that isn't is mabel and she doesn't need to be because she's perfect and (laughs) she there's an exchange that she and charles have and charles goes i want you to be less mean and she goes 
I know you do. N- yeah. And then walks past him. And I, I, again, that's what made me go, why do I like <laughs> these kinds of women? I need to unpack that in therapy, maybe. Um, but it's a good episode. It's really funny. It made me laugh out loud a couple of times. It's really good. The turkey thing is so funny. It's it, a solid episode. Is it like a 3.5 on the curve? Yeah, I'd say scale? 4. I'm I laughed sure. out loud several times. And to the point, because you asked me whether or not I'd caught up, meaning yeah. that I watched the entire thing. Um, I made the realization that I need to watch this when like my faculties are about me because it's a funny show and I want yeah. to remember the jokes rather than like what happens. So I can't watch it. I generally watch TV right before bed. And so oh, I yeah. can't. Mm-mm. This is not the show for that. So no, I need to schedule in only murders in the building time. Yeah, you do. Um on my calendar i've actually been pleased i have not seen spoilers online i did watch it like the day after it came out so the finale um so that i wouldn't get spoiled but i yeah i haven't seen spoilers i normally don't care about spoilers but for a murder mystery i do yeah it's a kind of big deal it's kind of the whole point of one yeah it's literally who done it is the correct I've heard recently the opposite of a who done it as a how did it. Okay. Like you know who did like Columbo is a who did how is a how did it? Cuz sure. generally at the beginning they go this is the person that murdered them. It's like the Jeopardy question <laughs> answer version of a murder mystery. <laughs> uh, well, I mean that also works for who done it though. Who is <laughs> Yeah, but no, yeah, but I like, absolutely it's, agree. It's, it's rever- the opposite. It's reversed. Yes, yeah, the reversed engineered. Yes. Yeah, one hundred percent. Ugh. Um. So next week we're covering the next episode in this series. I don't know what it's episode called. Episode five. The the fifth one. The Empire Strikes Back. Yep. Um. Okay. Goodbye, everybody. I call this a meeting of the amateur detective club too close. Gavel sound. Two hours we recorded. You're oh, not gosh. getting all of this. Nope. <laughs>